Good evening. I'm going to tell you a little story today. A story which actually started quite a long time ago, but let's start in 1964. There were three papers that, in physics that were published uh, in that year within a span of a month. Uh, one was written by Braut and Englert, the next one was written by Higgs, and the next one was written by Guralnik, Hagen, and Kibble. These three papers uh, tried to explain a rather esoteric uh, piece of the puzzle that physicists were working on at that point in time, which had to do with a new theory of the universe that physicists were working on. And it actually turned out the 60s were the last big revolution in physics, uh, in how we explain the universe, how we think of the universe, how we understand the universe, uh, completely changed in uh, uh, those years. But of course, revolutions in science, you can only know that they're revolutions in science through hindsight. At that point, the people who were working on it didn't quite know what they were working on. Uh, what these three papers tried to explain was how do objects get mass? Where does mass come from? There was a new theory which uh, seemed to explain a lot of things about the universe that uh, uh, were not quite well understood before that, but where does mass come from? And they came up with an idea uh, which, along with many other ideas, became known as the standard model. So today, I'm gonna to tell you a story, uh, this story about the standard model, and one part of the standard model, the part that has to do with, at that point, was called the Braut, Englert, Higgs, Guralnik, Hagen, Kibble mechanism. <laughs> the standard model, since then, has led to dozens of Nobel Prizes is in physics. Some of the faces that you see here uh, include uh, Professor Weinberg at UT Austin, includes uh, many, many famous physicists from Nambu to uh, uh, Kobayashi, Maskawa, Professor uh, Li Yang, uh, all of these people, Professor uh, Leon, uh, Dr. Letterman, who used to be the director of Fermilab, who has been here at UT and given a talk, um, and many others. There are people who were associated with discoveries in the standard model who are not uh, uh, shown here, and there were thousands and thousands of physicists who work on the standard model who uh, thousands and thousands of physicists who worked on the standard model, and there was the one little piece that was crucial to the standard model, but there was no evidence of it during the 50 years since 1964, and that was the Higgs. It, that mechanism that had that long name with the seven physicists on it eventually get to be called the Higgs uh, model, or the Higgs mechanism, or the Higgs particle, or the Higgs boson, because Professor Higgs kept working on it and published many papers on it. That was his single focus. And everything else about the standard model fell into place, leading to all of these Nobel Prizes and leading to all of the uh, uh, mechanisms that we uh, think of as fundamental mechanisms, uh, words like gauge theories, words like uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking, uh, quantum field theory, all of these ideas. Uh, we're missing this one little piece, which was the Higgs particle. Now, what is the Higgs particle? I told you that it explains where mass comes from. The Higgs uh, uh, idea is actually very simple. Imagine uh, that there is some kind of a field. There is some kind of uh, 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 something that exists everywhere in the universe. It's in this room. It's uh, in galaxies, it's between stars, it's everywhere. And objects, particles, which experience this field get their mass from the field. Now we can look at a cartoon in order to understand uh, 
the Higgs. Um, in this cartoon, uh, imagine this room. This room is full of people. So all the people in this room are like the Higgs field. And someone enters the room. Uh, that person uh, comes and whispers something to someone and uh, starts a rumor. A lot of people in the room are going to go and collect around this person to listen to that rumor. That's how the Higgs field works. The people the, in this analogy are the Higgs field that cluster around objects and give it mass. And eventually, the person who started the rumor, you cannot see the person anymore. What you see is the mass of that object. So this is an uh, analogy with how the Higgs uh, particle work. But that's just a cartoon. So how do you find it? How do you go about uh, proving to scientists and to uh, the rest of the community that this is indeed more than a cartoon, that this is a reality, that this is how the universe operates, that this is how the universe works? In order to do that, in the 80s, physicists uh, worked very hard to come up with uh, a particle collider, a particle accelerator, which was going to be built very close to where we are right now, within 50 miles of here, and that was called the super collider, the SSC. In 1992, 30 years after the Higgs uh, mechanism has been proposed, the super collider was being built and the American Physical Society called the super collider the pinnacle of the dominance of the US in fundamental science. It was a high mark, high point in the field. We were re building finally a 50 mile long underground tunnel where we were going to do the tests that were necessary in order to find the Higgs boson and to prove that this is indeed the particle which gives everything mass. The, uh, a book was published at about the same time by uh, Dr. Letterman, and uh, the book which he claims, uh, he told the publisher that the title of the book should be The Goddamn Particle, but the publisher didn't like the goddamn part. He didn't think that that would be a good idea for the name of a book, and changed it to the god particle. I need some water. Uh, uh, the, uh, this book uh, was the ultimate realization of how important the Higgs had become for uh, the field of particle physics, for the field of physics. Now, uh, unfortunately, it turned out, a year later, in 1992 was when I came to Texas to work on the super collider. In 1993 came the pinnacle of despair for the field of particle physics in the US because the SSC was canceled. The SSC was canceled because of shortage of funds and the entire field took a pause and said, what can we do next? How are we going to find the Higgs boson and how are we going to uh, find out if this last piece of the standard model could be explained. The uh, physicists uh, went, moved at this point to uh, go and build a collider, a particle accelerator uh, in uh, Geneva, Switzerland at the European uh, uh, laboratory for Nuclear and Particle Physics. It's uh, in the, uh, right between the Alps and the Juras near Lake Geneva. It's only one third the size of the um, collider that was proposed in uh, Texas. Um, it was not uh, obvious whether we were going to find the Higgs with a collider which was only one third the size and one third the power but we went ahead anyway. And it took 15 years to uh, build this collider and to build uh, an experiment to build a detector, which is called the Atlas detector, which is 
uh, the largest scientific apparatus ever built. Uh, and uh, the Atlas detector, uh, you can think of it like a camera. It's a very, very unique camera, of course. It's a very special camera. It's a camera that can uh, take um, millions of pictures every second. It's a camera that can, uh, that collects uh, 12 billion, a million piece, billion pieces of information in every picture. It's a camera that not just takes a picture of uh, what happens in these particle collisions that we are studying, but it's something that can uh, uh, measure all the various properties of the event that we are taking a picture of. So this was our attempt to go find the Higgs. This is a camera which is not something that you carry around in your uh, cell phone or in your pocket. This is a camera which is the size of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Next time you go to Paris and you are uh, going down the River Seine and you look at the Notre Dame Cathedral, think about the detector that we have built that, uh, think about the detector that we have built deep underground near the Swiss Alps in Geneva, Switzerland, that can uh, take pictures millions of times a second and that is uh, built piece by piece. Now, who built this detector? This detector was built, uh, thank you so much. Thanks. My students know that when I teach, I always have a bottle of water next to me. I should have remembered to bring that. <laughs> thank you. Now I have two of them. Somehow I completely lost my voice because it got so dry. Okay, let's try that now. <laughs> let's reset. Okay, so I was uh, talking about the Atlas detector. This detector is so uh, complex um, and it took 15 years to build. I remember starting to uh, propose and design this detector uh, in 1994. And uh, parts of this detector were built in 100 different universities and laboratories all over the world, at, uh, including some of the smaller pieces of the detector that you see here were built right here at UTA. If you look at the picture on the right-hand side, you will see a cage. I'm not sure how much uh, uh, resolution you have. Uh, which is hanging from uh, 300 feet from a crane. And in that case, the person wearing the uh, hard hat is uh, me working on one of the pieces of the detector. And you have a graduate student who is holding on to that crane and keeping it stable with a rope <laughs> in that picture. And uh, this de uh, detector was built right here at UTA in 100 different pieces, each of the pieces the size of a person, and each of the pieces about twice the weight of a person that were shipped piece by piece on, a pl on flight after flight, one of them every week to Geneva to uh, be part of the Atlas detector. So now that we have built the detector, and the detector was finally ready around uh, 2009, uh, next, we started collecting data with this uh, detector. Started collecting data that then we were going to analyze to look for the Higgs and to look for other laws of physics. The data is, uh, uh, fans out all over the world. It comes from Geneva, from the uh, experiment, but it fans out all over the world as it analyzed by thousands and thousands of physicists uh, all over the world. Uh, including uh, using a supercomputer right here at UTA, uh, including uh, 30 or 40 different supercomputers uh, that 
receives the data at uh, uh, billions of bits every second. The, our experiment runs 24 hours a day, 365 days a year collecting data, collecting these millions and millions of pictures, and we look at these billions of pictures and we try to find the Higgs. All of this entire story focused on looking for this last piece of the puzzle of the standard model, uh, which is the Higgs particle. And this is what one of the pictures looked like. A picture of, uh, this is um, just a piece of the picture, but it's a picture nonetheless of what uh, happens in uh, the billions of pictures that we have collected that show us what uh, we uh, think is uh, 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 what we are studying are the laws of physics. Now this particular picture, which we collected, uh, seemed to be like what was predicted to be the Higgs particle, but it was only one. And one is not enough in order to claim that we have found it, because it could be a coincidence, it could be an accident, it could be uh, a picture of something else. So we collected more and more and more and more of them over a period of three years till on July 4th, 2012, we finally had enough data to tell the world that we have found the Higgs particle, that we had found the Higgs boson. The standard model of particle physics was finally complete. This picture, which shows all of the different particles that we have found, each of these particles have led to, uh, 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 most of these particles have led to a Nobel Prize in physics. All of these connections that you see, which are ex the new laws of physics, have also led to the Nobel Prize in physics. This pi uh, picture is finally complete with the Higgs uh, at the bottom of this picture. All, everything in this uh, standard model is now found. So last year, uh, the Nobel Prize Committee didn't wait very long. A few months after we showed our final uh, proof that we had found the uh, Higgs boson, they awarded the Nobel Prize to Professor Higgs and Professor Engler. Professor Braut, Braut had passed away in the meantime, uh, waiting 50 years for us to find the Higgs particle. And um, in the citation for the Nobel Prize, they mentioned that the, as it was discovered, as it was found by the Atlas experiment, our experiment. So, a happy ending. But is it really an ending? Have we really completely figured out everything there is to in the standard model of particle physics? It turns out there are lots and lots of questions that still remain. There are questions even hidden among uh, every single particle and every single line in there. But the ultimate question, and the most important question that I'm going to leave you with, is the question of what we call dark matter. It turns out, even after our best explanation of the universe and the standard model, we have only found and understood 5% of the matter in the universe. 95% is still missing. And that's the question that we are focusing on right now. Thank you.